welcome to my root cellar. This is not the fanciest root cellar you're ever going to see on YouTube, and that's okay. But this room helps us to feed our family and to feed our family well all year long. And so the garden season, the canning and preservation season is coming up very soon, and it's time to get this room in order to think about what I want to can in this coming year, what I want to do differently, to take note of things that I need to use up, and definitely to put away empty jars because we've been eating out of this root cellar all winter long. So we have lots and lots and lots of empty jars and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so this root cellar is a true root cellar, meaning it is high in humidity. So it's actually not the best place for me to be keeping all of our canned goods. But it is a space that is available. It's not ideal because the humidity can cause the lids to rust. I've had a couple fail, not very many, but it does mean that we have to keep on top of rotating our food storage that is in jars pretty quickly. Everything that's in here needs to be used mostly within a year, definitely within two years, because the humidity just doesn't allow it to, to remain on the shelves longer than that and to stay good. So we have a few things in here that are a little bit older than that, and I need to make a note of that to make that my priority to get those things used up because we don't want to waste food. Um, <clears throat> occasionally there are things that happen and food gets wasted, but we should be doing our best all the time to waste as little as possible. This is, however, a good place to store vegetables. That's what it was built for. <clears throat> Excuse me. My grandparents um, built this house. Well, actually, it's a double wide on a foundation that they moved here, and they built the root cellar for storing things like potatoes and onions and apples and those kinds of things, and it's wonderful for that. Although the onions that I bought last August or September, they are definitely past their prime at this point. Um, I don't think they were actually a storage onion either. They're just like from the grocery store. I got them in a 40 pound box. We're probably going to go ahead and cut the greens off of these and either dry them or freeze them and we'll use that part. And usually, even on these, a couple of the layers will still be edible, but that's going to be dealt with. Um, so if you are someone who gardens, if you're someone who cans things, even things that you get at the grocery store that are cheap, like these mandarin oranges, or I have pineapple that I've canned from the grocery store, we can um, dried beans to have them on hand already cooked, um, anything like that. If you do any kind of preservation, of course, it's important to keep track of what you're doing. It's a lot of work, you know, blood, sweat, and tears go into these jars of food. And so you want to just keep on top of it, know exactly what you're using, what you're not using, what you want to preserve more of, what you don't think you want to preserve anymore. Um, we preserved a lot of pickles in 2020 and 2021, and they were mostly sweet pickles because that was what my family was enjoying at that time and they're not really enjoying that anymore. So we need to eat them up, but we probably won't be continuing to preserve a lot of sweet pickles. We'll go to more dill pickles if we decide to, pick, to preserve pickles. Um, this time of year is also a wonderful time. Like I said, you're thinking about what you wanna preserve and all that, but it's also a wonderful time to make sure that you have the supplies that you need on hand to do the canning and pres preservation that you want to do. So, for example, this morning, I went ahead and looked and discovered that I definitely need to buy canning jar lids. We can anywhere from 500 to 700 jars of food every year. I only have 15 dozen canning lids right now. So that needs to go at the top of my priority list for my preservation to-do list but also at the top of my budgeting priority list because they have gone up in price. Um, I used to be able to get a dozen canning lids for like $1.75 and then they went to $2.25 and now they're closer to $3 a dozen. So um, I need to get those. Also, if you're doing pressure canning, you want to make sure that you have an extra seal 
for your pressure canner. I ordered a couple last year, I placed one. I have two pressure canners, but I have one spare um, seal ready for this year's canning so that I can not be stopped in the middle of a project because there's nothing worse than getting a canner full of jars into the canner and then it won't seal and build pressure. So thinking about those things, I have a notebook ready to make notes of things I want to do differently, things I want to remember. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to get some of these jars organized so that they're more out of the way. Some of them are in cardboard and the boxes have disintegrated. So I need to deal with that. And then I will bring down probably a bucket of hot water and wipe off jars and things as I'm making sure that they're where they need to go. So let's go do that. All right, here are all of the empty jars that we need to deal with and put away. And all of those were full last fall. So I'm going to get these into some totes I brought over from the garage. Get as many of them into plastic as we can. And then I can get to the shelves more easily. are pretty small but it's what we had available so we're gonna see if we can make it work we probably won't be able to put all of them away but if we can get some of them put away it makes it easier and of course I will pull these out whenever it's time to can and I will probably bleach them because they get pretty nasty sitting here, even in boxes or in totes. So we'll wash them and bleach them whenever it's time to use them. But in the meantime, we'll just get them to where they're more easily accessed when that time comes. That one's not going to fit. That's looking better. So we have this bottom one right here is like odd antique kind of jars. Um, just <laughs> older ones I don't really want to get rid of. And then there's some other things like we have a couple of those um, the pint jars that have like the handle, you know, that you can use as a cup. There's a couple of those in there. There's a sprouting lid that goes on a mason jar. Um, those kinds of things in there. The shallow one there is all pint jars. This one is all pint jars. And those are our only pint jars. Um, we don't do a lot in pints for a family of 10. And then this is like half pints and like just little tiny jelly jars. You know, I mostly we use those for gifts or if I'm just desperate because really it costs more to can in those because you're getting less in the jar and you still have to pay for the lid. So we don't do a lot of those. There's this box, this tote, this tote, this tote, this tote, this tote, this tote, and this crate. And they are all quarts. I didn't count them or anything. And then these ones, a couple of them are quarts. And then we have a lot of these, they're mayonnaise jars, old mayonnaise jars, and they fit a... Um, wide mouth lid and ring 
and I can in them. People say you shouldn't recycle jars, but I feel like these jars from probably, I don't even know when they're from, maybe the 70s, um, are sturdier than most of the canning jars that you buy today. I don't pressure can in them because I don't know how they would hold up to that. But things like applesauce, this is like a quart and a half. And the same thing, I have a couple of like actual quart and a half. Well, these ones um, I think are juice jars. They have like a ribbing around them. And they're the same thing. They're a standard regular mouth lid and ring. And it's like a quart and a half. And I can in them. They're very sturdy. They're fine. Use your own judgment. So, oh, and then this is just like some decorative jars that I use just for storing things. So now it's time to start wiping down all these jars and making sure they're sorted where they need to go, like with like, and make some notes. Like for one thing, we're planting like 400 green bean plants this year because that's all the green beans we have. Usually we have a lot of green beans in here, but that's okay because there's a few jars there and we will be harvesting green beans in another couple of months. So this is an exciting time, just getting everything ready for all the work, the satisfying work that needs to be done this summer. And we're done for now. Um, everything's wiped off, organized, cleaned up. Um, I'll show you what we have in here real quick. Um, so the onions were up here and I moved them because I need to be able to see them to remember to deal with them. So on this shelf is fruit. We have butternut squash, pineapple, mandarin oranges. These are sauces, so it's mostly applesauce. We also have some peach sauce and pear sauce. And those can be used in place of applesauce in recipes or in place of oil in recipes. And then we have the um, cinnamon apples that are made with like the red hot candies. And these are just canned apples. Over here, this is all jams and jellies, more jams. These are pickled red beets, which I just replanted my beets. We will see. We need beets this year. Peaches pears. This is all older and it needs used up. It is canned grapes and canned blueberries. So they need to be used up. This is pie fillings and syrups along there. Nothing there. And then our green beans, which like I said, we need to get those used up. And then we'll be starting fresh with none in here whenever it's time to start canning this summer. All right, basically we can have probably a meal of green beans, a meal with green beans every week until we start harvesting. This is, these are chicken leg quarters. It looks really nasty, but it's good. Um, and then chicken breasts. I think we have one jar of hamburger, one jar of roast beef. These are lard from when we get our pigs butchered so we don't have to buy so much oil. They would throw it away and my parents render it down for me. So this is tomato sauce tomato sauce, whole tomatoes, and then our box of onions that need dealt with. Um, over here, this is pickled stuff, relishes and banana peppers, um, onions and cucumber pickle, more pickles the way across there. This is um, green beans and potatoes canned in ham broth, sauerkraut, cabbage, mixed vegetables, oh, these are lima beans, corn, um, dried beans that we canned. This is apple butter and we'll be making apple butter again this fall so we need to eat that up. More canned beans and some canned water in case of emergency. So the water I just can whenever I have an empty spot in a canner I will fill a jar with water and put on a used lid because if it doesn't seal it's not a big deal. And then we have that on hand for like power outages and stuff. It's just good to have. Occasionally the seal will fail and we won't use it for drinking or whatever. And we will just use it for, you know, we can boil it and wash dishes or whatever. 
we don't have a lot there because we had a lot of power outages last year. So we'll be kind of rebuilding that. It's an easy way to put away a little bit of water just for when you might need it. And then I keep these all hanging here. And I also have a bag of rings that I keep in the garage that's drier. But the ones that are rusted on here were rusted before I put them there. They're actually not rusting in here, even though it's damp, I guess, because they're not on the floor or whatever. So that is what the root cellar is looking like right now. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, are you getting ready for canning and preserving and freezing and all of those things? Are you getting ready to do that this summer as I am? Or is that something you're not interested in? Um, how do you prepare if you do can? Are there certain things that you are doing this time of year? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.